Are we filmed? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's going. And then I have to duck down so I can actually see the film. Good evening, guys. So, how do you guys do this, like, vlogging thing when, when people are, like, sick or, like, crazy things happen? Because today was a crazy day. And <laughs> we have a, well, he'll be one on... Saturday? Sneak down. It's tomorrow too. Saturday? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> oh yeah, tomorrow's Friday. On Saturday our son will be one. And um he still wakes up like three hours a night. Wait, did I say that? Right? <laughs> he wakes so up tired. like three times a night. We get about <laughs> we probably get three hours of sleep some nights. Other nights we get five or six. Anyways, but, last night was a bad night. Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, yeah. The last two couple nights have been not very much sleep. And then I happened to get a sinus infection, which is no fun, but we got some medicine. I'm going to power through, and the show must go on. The show must go on. But anyways, that's why we didn't do much vlogging today. Oh, or and, I didn't. And I was not feeling good in the morning, so <laughs> I... Uh, didn't turn the microphone on. Oh, so yes. We have, we have a bunch of wasted film. Delete. Yeah, we Try filmed a clip. <laughs> that was a good little piece we filmed this morning, too. But anyways. It was awesome, but you'll never see it. Never. Well, maybe. Maybe we'll show it, but. Oh, I already deleted it. Oh, okay. Anyways, guys. So stay tuned because we're still going to read this, um, the Bible story. So stay tuned for that and so, the good night story. Yeah, I'm going to go lay down for a little bit and then the kids will come together. and We'll read both the stories together tonight so I can just get them done and go back to sleep. And I'll probably go to bed early because we're cool like that. <laughs> and we do have one of our neighbor friends is over. He, he wants to hang out and say hi to everybody, Joey. So he's going to sit down with us. We're going to sit up on the couch tonight and read the stories. But thank you guys so much. I know not a lot of people probably watch us because we're brand new and learning too but we just want to say thank you to the people who are we love you guys oh and we're a featured channel on our friend devin's channel we are yeah he just listed us in his featured channel hey nice. so hey devin hi and we featured him too thanks for the support yep and the help <laughs> and the help don't forget to hit the like button. Do people say that? I think so, or subscribe or something. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> see you at story time. All right, bye. Hi. Um, I'm Blake, um, and this is my neighbor, Joey. What's up? That's your joke. Okay, um, why did the birdie go to the hospital? Because, because it... Uh, to get a treatment. <laughs> All right, you ready to read, Gabriel? Yeah. <laughs> this is the beautiful world God made. How different it is from the cold, dark picture we looked at before. Now the world is warm and bright and pleasant. The animals are playing and everyone is happy. God has made all these things. <laughs> God has made all these things, and all of them are very good, but there are no people anywhere. God has not made any people. All the pretty things are here. <laughs> well, hi. All the pretty things are here, but there are no people to enjoy them. So God will make some people to live here. Question one Can you see a lion in the picture? No. No? I see a lion. Do you see a lion, Gabriel? I see a lion. There's a lion. All right. <laughs> I saw an chupacabra. Question number two. Can you see any people? No. No people. Wait, yes, I do. No. That's right probably there. the second. It's a reflection. No. <laughs> the people are over here, man. Oh, Question right three. There. Did God decide to make some people? I yes. think we just heard he did. All right. Black dog. It was not long after this that there occurred the first of the mysterious events that rid us of at last of the captain. It was a bitter cold winter. Hard frost came and heavy gales blew around the little cove. 
I knew that my poor father had not long to live. One cold January morning, a pale, thin man came to the door of the inn. He was missing two fingers from his left hand, and he spoke in a quiet but determined manner. He asked me first. Uh, blah, blah. He asked me first what my name was. When I replied, Jim Hawkins, he nodded as if he already knew this. Uh, he nodded as if he already knew this. Then he asked me to bring him a glass of rum. After he drained the glass, he looked up at me and said, Come here, Jim. Is this table over here for my mate Bill? I told him I did not know his mate Bill. The only person who lived at the inn besides my family was the captain. Then I then described the captain. The man smiled in recognition. That's my mate Bill, all right, he said. You and I just go back to the parlor, Jim, and we'll get behind the door and give Bill a little surprise when he comes in. So the stranger and I hid behind the large oak parlor door. At last in strode the captain, slamming the door behind him. He looked straight ahead as he headed right for the breakfast table. Bill, said the stranger in a loud voice. The captain spun around on his heel and faced us. He turned totally white. He had the look of a man who had just seen a ghost. Come, Bill, you know me. You must remember your old shipmate, said the stranger. Captain Gasp. Black dog, he said. That's right, laughed the stranger, and I think it's time we had a little talk. With that, Black Dog asked me to bring two glasses of rum so he and the captain could have their little talk. When I returned with the rum, they already settled on each other on each on either side of the table. When I returned with the rum, they had already seated on either side of the table. For a long time, I thought I certainly did my best to listen. I could hear nothing but low voices. Soon the voices grew louder and louder. Then all of a sudden, there was a tremendous explosion of curses and other noise. The chair and the table went over in a crash. A clash of still followed and then a cry of pain. And the next instant I saw Black Dog in full flight. The captain was running after him and both men had drawn swords. Blood was streaming from Black Dog's left shoulder as they reached the door. The captain aimed a blow at Black Dog that certainly would have cut him in two had it not been for the low-hanging signboard of the Admiral Binbao Inn. You can see the notch on the lower side of the frame to this day. Once out on the road, Black Dog, in spite of his wound, ran away and disappeared over the edge of the hill. The captain stood staring at the signboard like a bewildered man. He passed his hand over his eyes and shouted for me to bring him some rum and to be quick about it. The next thing I heard was a loud fall in the parlor. I ran in and saw the captain lying full length on the floor. At that instant, my mother came running downstairs to help me. Between us, we raised the captain's head. He was breathing very loudly, but his eyes were closed and his face was drain, uh, drained of all color. Dear, dear, cried my mother, what a disgrace upon the house, and with your poor father so sick. It was a great relief to us when the door opened and Dr. Lively came to pay us a visit, uh, came to pay a visit to my father. Oh, doctor, I cried, what shall we do? Where is the wound? The doctor soon discovered that the captain had not been wounded at all. He had had a stroke. In no time at all, the doctor rolled up the captain's sleeve and prepared to take some blood. <clears throat> On the captain's arm, we noticed many tattoos. One said, here's luck. Another, a fair wind. And a third said, Billy Bones, his fancy. All right. From the tattoo, we figured out that Billy Bones must be the captain's real name. In a little while, the captain came to and we managed to hoist him up the stairs and put him in his bed. The doctor warned all of us that any rum drinking would be the death of the captain. He also confided in me that the old sailor would have to stay in bed for at least a week or he might suffer still another stroke.